Stephen, one of the most fascinating questions that we can ask is about human free will. And it's fascinating because many scientists who do not believe in anything supernatural and therefore believe in a deterministic uh, flow of science have to deal with the nature of free will. So if you have determinism in science, how can you have free will? And there are some complex philosophical uh, maneuvering, shall I put it, which enables some to say that we can have free will. And sometimes they talk about quantum indeterminacy, but it, it's a very intricate philosophical discussion. As you look at the concept of free will uh, from your perspective, uh, how do you think we should address that question? Well, so I'm, I'm sort of curious. When we use a computer, for example, we often say, we often imagine that in a sense, it has free will. It does all these strange things that we don't expect. Um, we kind of attribute to it uh, kind of almost human qualities of, of acting in a way that's, that's free in its will, so to speak. <laughs> but one of the things that I'm curious about is, is when, when we know that a system ultimately has perhaps even quite simple underlying rules, um, how to what is it possible that one can go from perhaps quite simple underlying rules to behavior that is complex enough that one can imagine that that behavior is free of those underlying rules. Mm. So, you know, one has the notion that's kind of like the robots of 1950s science fiction or something, that, you know, they have simple logical rules that are driving them, so they do these very simple to understand dumb things, right? Mm. Well, one of the things that we've discovered is that if you look at all the possible simple rules that you might use to, to drive a system, so to speak, that many of those rules, in fact, don't lead to simple behavior, they need to lead to extremely elaborate and complex behavior. Behavior so complex that it's very hard to predict it. In fact, we even know that there's this sort of fundamental phenomenon that I call computational irreducibility that says that when you just sort of watch the unfolding of the rules of a system, that there isn't a way to sort of reduce the computational effort needed to find out what the system will do. Essentially, the only way to find out what the mm -hmm. system will do is just to follow each step and see what it does. And so, in that sense, we, we, that, that's sort of a, a place where when you, when you look at one of these systems, it appears to be behaving in a sense as if it has free will. It appears to be behaving in a way that is so complex that we don't recognize the simplicity of its underlying rules. And as a practical matter, when we ask about some, you know, let's say a, a moth that keeps on sort of mm -hmm. repeatedly, you know, banging against a, you know, a window or something, um, it doesn't seem to have free will. Right? And in a sense, it's uh, because we can readily predict what it's going to do. We don't, we're not, um, uh, there's no, we can sort of reduce the computation that it's doing to just say it's just going to keep on doing that. What we see in many of these systems that one can study in sort of the computational universe of possible systems is that there, there isn't that kind of predictable simplicity. Instead, there's sort of an irreducible uh, complexity to what the system does. And I think that that's kind of the essence of what we see as being uh, kind of the f free will in, in the systems that we study. But it's not clear that free will and uh, irreducible uh, 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 complexity are, are the same thing. I mean, you can have something that's very complex and, and, and you cannot define it in any, in any simple equation. But that, that by, its, by its very nature, doesn't make it free will, does it? Well, I think that you know the, the, the question, the sort of the, the bottom level of that question is, does the universe operate according to the kinds of rules that I'm talking about, or is there something that sort of comes from outside that mixes things up? So one of the questions, and this relates to sort of issues of responsibility and its relationship to determinism and free will and so on, are we able to actually capture the complete rules for mm, a system, mm. um, or do we need something coming from outside of those rules, outside of the system, kind of kicking the system to determine what it will do? Mm. And so one of the things that's sort of surprising, perhaps, is that it can be the case that we can know the complete rules for a system. Perhaps one day we'll know the complete rules for the universe, yes. yet it still can be the case that the behavior of the system, in effect, operates as if it is free of those rules, in the sense that there's sort of an irreducible distance between the underlying rules and the actual behavior of the system. Well, only, but, but if you play that system over and over again, you will It'll get... It'll do exactly the same, same thing. thing. It will do the same thing. So isn't that almost by... And it would be impossible for it to do otherwise. That's correct. So that, to me, is not free will. Well, I think that that may be the way that we work. I think that is the way we work. So if you attribute to us free will, 
then yeah, that I'm, has I'm, to be I'm free not will. attributing. I'm I'm saying that's an open question. That it depend that the premise that that you start with, uh, uh, and, and many people start with a similar premise that, that, that the world is determined and therefore try to justify a kind of an artificial free will. And that may be erroneous. So what we may be concluding is that the, 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 the human sense of free will that we have is no different from what you're talking about in terms of the, the rules generating this kind of complexity, but they're both not free. Right. Well, so the, then the question is, is there anything that is free in our universe? <laughs> yes, and that really has to, to, to answer that. We have to, we have to ask the question of, of sort of, are the ultimate rules for our universe deterministic? And if they are, then it could be the case that we would conclude, you know, that if the rules, the deterministic rules were fairly simple, then it would have to be like, you know, the old science fiction robots and we'd never see anything that we would even imagine was free will. The, the, I think, more remarkable thing is that it is, in fact, possible for there to be rules, even quite simple rules, that are completely deterministic, yet sort of the behavior is complex enough that it has all of the properties that we would normally attribute to something that seems to be free of those underlying, underlying laws. And uh, my guess is that as we progress with our technology and our ability to understand how brains work and so on, that this kind of interpretation of what we think of as this phenomenon we call free will is going to become more and more relevant because we're going to, we're going to be seeing, we're going to be seeing that there's this chain of neurons that does this and that and the other. Um, and we're going to be asking ourselves, how can it be the case that when there is right. this kind of deterministic set of processes that we get something which to us is a phenomenon like free will. And I think this idea of computational irreducibility is the core of what allows us to understand how even when we know the underlying rules, we can still have something that to us seems like the phenomenon of free will.